Hi, I'm Alex McCord and welcome to The Real Deal on TheStir.com. Man, oh man, we have a lot of reality TV to cover today. Last night we had the premiere of season three of Kim Zolciak's spinoff Don't Be Tardy on Bravo and three brand new shows on VH1, Dating Naked, Candidly Nicole, and Leanne and Eddie. Ooh, and don't worry, I will come back to Leah Remini's It's All Relative, just not today. First, don't be tardy for the twins. Believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever seen Kim Zolciak in action. By the time I started covering The Real Housewives of Atlanta, she had left, and this is the first season of Don't Be Tardy that I have covered. And although we have been in the same room at various events back when we were both housewives, we've never actually met in person, so my experience of Kim is only through the press and tabloids. Well, shut my mouth. I liked her. I really did. So there's no weave pulling, no fighting with the grown women, just lots of babies, lots of hair, lots of teenagers, and a really big house that nobody better break into. <clears throat> that was actually one of my favorite moments. Um, you see a lot of the views of their house through security cameras, and Kim says it's because she and Croy don't trust anyone other than themselves to take care of their children, which I'm sure is true, but it's also a smart production choice. See, Kim and Croy are living the high life like many of the housewives, and by showing that they have all this security in place, they are deterring would-be thieves who scout for victims on reality TV, i.e., this is Fort Knox, don't even try, go somewhere else. Else. Next, three cheers to Kim for natural delivery of her twins. I was so happy that she stood up to that OBGYN and said no C-section. Yay! Yes, I am a natural birthing advocate, and I will give Kim a pass on the epidural because she had twins and one of them was breached. That's fine. Um, and I will get off my soapbox, but I can't stand it when doctors push C-sections as a CYA move. Good for her for standing up to him. Uh, even better, that she made Croy drink the placenta smoothie with her. Extra points for that. And finally, I like the style of the show. You see the cameras, you see Kim addressing the crew, and even in confessional interviews, addressing her online haters. This is all good. Now, it will be interesting to see whether the momentum keeps up. Um, the huge event, the birth of the twins, was in episode one, so where do they go from here for the rest of the season? Um, really, I want to know if she convinces Croy to get a vasectomy. Snip, snip. <laughs> Next, it's over to VH1, where people are dating naked. Two main dating contestants go to an exotic location, in this case Panama. They meet each other, then each of them meet two other people, and at the end, they all decide whom they are most attracted to. Sounds like every other dating show in the world, right? Pretty much, except that all the daters are naked, although their parts are blurred, so they're actually more covered than if they were wearing skimpy swimwear. In press interviews, executives at VH1 insisted that after the first few minutes, you'll forget they're naked, and that's true, we do. But then it's like every other dating show, and it doesn't really stand out that much. Now, there was one element of big fun, and that was giggling at the contestants doing things that maybe you don't want to do naked on their dates. For example, one couple, Chrissy and Joe, went tubing. Now, as the tubing was happening, my eight-year-old son wandered in. It's summer vacation. His bedtime is later. Ah! Well, his comment on the naked tubing, Mommy, are you watching The Science of Stupid? <laughs> that is a real show, by the way, on National Geographic, and I highly recommend it if you have kids. Next, the same naked couple played the bongos, which made me think of Matthew McConaughey, uh, not whether or not this couple would hit it off. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google it. Bottom line, so to speak, either put this on the Playboy channel so that we can all see the goods, or tweak it and make it more like a naked version of Wipeout, because that would be fun. Next up for your viewing pleasure, Candidly Nicole. Based on the great press interviews she's been giving as a campaign for this show, I wanted to love it, but I don't. Now the premise is hilarious. Each storyline is put together based on one of her outrageous tweets, so it's more improv comedy than reality, and that's fine, I like that genre. But during episode one, I flipped between amusement and hatred. I'm debating whether I'll watch it again. Here's why. Nicole can be adorable and cute, but the things that she does to strangers are not nice. They are thoughtless, self-absorbed, and mean. First, Nicole browbeats her friend Erin to allow her to fill out a fake dating profile on Erin's behalf, and it would have been a fantastic scene if they'd cut it after they make the profile and laugh about it over drinks with their friends. Perfection. But they kept going, and it turned into an episode of Catfish. Neve and Max would not be happy. 
Nicole picked a guy, Rich, and corresponded with him, got his hopes up, started sexting with him, and then met him on Aaron's behalf. Not only did the guy seem upset, he accused Nicole of catfishing him, and Nicole openly mocked him during their date. It was the ultimate gotcha moment. Second, she destroyed an unsuspecting Uber driver. So part of this week's storyline is that Nicole can't parallel park very well, so she uses Uber all the time. And if you don't know what Uber is, it's a smartphone app that matches you up with a car and driver based on your location. It's all automatic and it is wonderful. So Nicole gets a female driver and decides it would be fun to take her along on all her stops. The driver agrees, but has a fair question. Why would Nicole Ritchie, a celebrity, want to take her, the driver, along with her and not one of her friends? Nicole gets really offended and angry and cuts the trip short. So what are we meant to think from that? That she doesn't have any friends? Didn't quite get it. But what got me most is that Nicole pulled an Alicia Silverstone from Clueless moment here, which you can only get away with if you're 17. While chattering away at the driver, she asked, don't you get bored? Oh, well, you must have taken this job because you love driving. Here we, the viewers, say, no, you idiot. She's driving an Uber car to make a living, to pay for her family, her bills. It's not because she bloody loves driving. And you can see all of this play out on the Uber driver's face. Nicole seems offended that this hardworking driver doesn't want to drop everything and hang out with her all day. So she abruptly ends the scene. All right, that's what I hated. Here's what I loved. I loved Nicole's interaction with people close to her her banter with her friend Aaron, uh, and her parallel parking lesson with her dad, who is fabulous not only because he is Lionel Richie, but also because he gets Dad of the Year award while simultaneously mocking himself. See, the self-mockery and the mockery of friends and family and equals, all that is great, but mocking strangers, mocking service providers caught in your web, that's not nice. What did you think? Are you gonna keep watching? Finally, it is the much anticipated premiere of Leanne and Eddie. Oh my gosh. Out of all the Twitter questions and comments the real deal Alex got last night, 99% of them were about this one. Oh, home record. Oh, Brandy wins. Oh, oh, oh. Now, I can't imagine that anybody who watches my show doesn't know the backstory of this show, but just in case you don't, here's the 10 second version. Real housewife of Beverly Hills, Brandy Glanville, was married to Eddie Cibrian. Eddie cheated on Brandy with country singer Leanne Rimes. Then he divorced Brandy and married Rimes. Ah, the tabloids have been dogging this scandal for years and it keeps being brought up all over reality TV. There's been a huge fight back and forth over their two sons, but not so much about custody, more about reality TV. Brandy wanted the sons to appear on The Housewives. Eddie said no. Eddie wanted the kids to, to appear on this show, and presumably Brandy said no. But before we even get to the drama of the actual show, there is a sneaky editing trick I saw right off the bat. There's plenty of editorial news footage of Brandy in the public domain, walking red carpets, paparazzi photos, etc. And to use all of that, all the producers have to do is buy the rights off Getty or Wire Image or wherever they came from. Brandy's a public figure, and since those images are bought and paid for and used briefly, they would not have to get permission or releases from Brandy or the boys. It's the same principle as any public figure walking past reality cameras at a media event. For example, I remember Elliot Spitzer showed up on The Housewives once. Same deal. So the opening credits are a series of obviously fake tabloid headlines that's very clever, and it pokes fun at the ridiculous gossip machine surrounding this scandal. The tagline of the series is, there are two sides to every story, this is ours. We also see that both Leanne and Eddie are executive producers, and I'm reminded of an interview back when the show was announced that Leanne said the show would be semi-scripted. Okay, so it's like Candidly Nicole, it's more improv comedy than reality. That's fine with me. With this tagline, I'm immediately thinking about Tori Spelling and Dean McDermott, um, i.e. there are so many stories about us that are fake that we want to make a whole reality show to give you the real story. So far, Eddie seems really angry, and Leanne seems natural. Every single thing out of Eddie's mouth is a dig at Brandy. They attend the premiere of his movie Best Man Holiday, and instead of saying, oh, yay, movie premiere, his comment in his confessional interview is, contrary to popular belief, <clears throat> my ex-wife, I do work. And later, I hope people are smart enough to see what she's doing and why she's doing it. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> 
Leanne, on the other hand, is doing typical reality show stuff. She gets out of a really stringent record contract, she celebrates by getting a tattoo, sings the national anthem at a charity event, and jumps out of a plane. I mean, really, that's all standard issue reality TV stuff. Another through line during this episode is the tabloid story that Leanne and Eddie are now getting a $50 million divorce. Eddie doesn't want to comment, but Leanne wants him to in order to shut it down. So ultimately to keep his wife happy, he agrees. So delicious, gossipy, scandalous. Now if the entire series is going to be about Eddie taking shots at Brandy, that's not going to help him. So far, Leanne seems surprisingly sympathetic, although we see in the super tease that her claws come out later. So this looks like reality TV as revenge. <laughs> Do we like this new genre? Will raking his ex-wife through the mud on television help or hurt Eddie's career? Let me know what you thought in the comments. For now, I'm Alex McCord. You're watching The Real Deal on the Stir.com. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Have a great weekend, and I will see you Monday.